Good evening, I'm Rusa Michael and you're watching Kini News, the show that brings you today's biggest stories. Thinking of filming something to put on social media? You may want to hold on first and watch what Communications and Multimedia Minister Safran Abdullah told Dewan Rakyat today. All filming, even for personal social media, will require a license from the National Film Development Corporation, FINAS. Communications and Multimedia Minister Saifuddin Abdullah told Dewan Rakyat today. Penerbit filem wajib memohon lesen pengeluaran filem serta surat perakuan penggambaran SPP tidak kira mereka adalah agensi media, arus perdana atau media personal yang menerbitkan filem di platform media sosial atau saluran tradisi. When asked how this would affect people who use social media platforms, Safran said that all content creation is subject to regulations. This raised many questions. Kluang MP Wong Su Ki then quizzed the minister on whether FINAS licenses are for social media or traditional media. Tafsiran filem tu, sama ada tafsiran filem tu yang disebut dalam akta FINAS ni, merangkumi semua filem uh, termasuk TikTok ataupun IGTV yang semua dipamil dalam media sosial atau tidak. Kerana kalau akta ni dikuat kuasa dengan uh, apa yang berlaku sekarang, maksudnya semua pengguna media sosial perlu mohon lesen dari FINAS. Jadi minta menteri memberi satu penjelasan yang jelas kepada seluruh rakyat Malaysia. Terima kasih. For your information, the FINAS Act defines films as recordings of any material, including feature films, short films, short subject films, trailers, documentaries, and advertising filmlets. Terima kasih, Yang Mohd Menteri. Tapi saya rasa tak menjawab sama ada Instagram live dan sebagainya. Adakah mereka tertakluk di bawah perkara ini? Cuma saya ingin mohon penjelasan daripada Yang Mohd Menteri. Adakah Dr. Dustin Van Dill yang uh, menghasilkan video the other side of the truth yang diterbit uh, yang di, di share oleh bernama TV uh, dalam media sosial adakah beliau mempunyai lesen untuk menghasilkan dokumentari uh, tersebut bahan tersebut mohon pandangan terima kasih sila menteri terima kasih tuan dan pertua yang ini saya serah kepada pihak penguasa ya sekiranya ada aduan dan sebagainya kita akan ambil uh, tindakan mengikut undang-undang dan bergantung kepada According to the FINAS website, to qualify for a film or video production license, one must have a registered company with 50,000 paid up capital. Speaking to reporters at a press conference later, opposition MP Fahmi Fadil called the minister's statement worrying due to its implication on all social media users in the country. Dan kita sedar ramai di kalangan kita yang menggunakan sama ada Instagram, Facebook Live. TikTok semua mungkin terkesan dengan takrifan yang digunakan oleh Yang Bermak Menteri pada hari ini jadi saya tak pasti sama ada Yang Bermak Menteri sedar tentang masalah secara keseluruhan or the full implication or the ramifications of his answer tapi kesannya agak besar dan uh, saya rasa ramai yang pasti akan bertanya sama ada selepas ini bila kita menerbitkan sebarang uh, video ya, dalam uh, media sosial apakah itu akan tertakluk kepada pembacaan akta seperti yang disebut oleh yang Bapak Menteri. If you use public transport or plan on going to crowded public places starting on the 1st of August you will need a mask. The use of face masks will be mandatory for everyone who plans to visit crowded public places or use public transport beginning August 1st. Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob said the government made the decision after noting increasing public disregard for standard operating procedures set during the recovery movement control order, including social distancing and the use of masks. Kerajaan telah membuat keputusan mulai daripada 1 hari bulan August Pemakaian pelitup muka di dalam pengangkutan awam dan tempat-tempat awam yang bersesak-sesak adalah diwajibkan. Orang ramai boleh menggunakan pelitup muka buatan sendiri, yang dijahit sendiri. Tetapi mengikut spesifikasi yang dibenarkan oleh WHO atau Pertubuhan Kesihatan Sedunia yang akan dikeluarkan oleh Kementerian Kesihatan. Ismail also said the non-compliance of SOPs have contributed to the rise in the number of COVID-19 cases and infection clusters being detected in the country lately. Tapi didapati hari ini di dalam LRT ke, di dalam bas ke, di mana-mana kenderaan awam, 
termasuk di dalam pesawat penutup muka tidak lagi digunakan walaupun kedudukan mereka berhimpit-himpit dan sebagainya penjarakan sosial kebanyakannya kalau kita lihat di tempat-tempat awam penjarakan sosial sudah lagi tidak dilaksanakan He warned failure to abide by this new ruling would subject the violator to actions in accordance with the Prevention and Control of Infectious Diseases Act 1988 the minister urged Malaysians to adhere to the SOP, including the use of masks even before the August 1st start date, especially as many would be celebrating Hari Raya Aidil Adha at the end of the month. Now that masks will be mandatory, there may be public concerns about the price. This was addressed by the government today. Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs Minister Alexander Nandalingi announced today that the ceiling price for face masks will drop by 30 sen to 1 ringgit and 20 sen per unit beginning August 15th. He said the wholesale price for the product would also be reduced from 1 ringgit and 45 sen per unit to 1 ringgit and 15 sen per unit starting the same day. The minister said the reduction comes as the government plans to make face mask use compulsory. Bakalah uh, tinjauan dan pemantauan mengenai pengeluaran serta pengedaran pelitup muka adalah mencukupi ditambah juga um, uh, dengan uh, yang diimport Jadi soal kebekalan, uh, tiada masalah. Nanda said this in response to a supplementary question by Batang Lupa MP Rohani Abdul Karim on the rationale behind the face mask price reduction. Before Senior Minister Ismail Sabri Yaakob announced the new ruling today, Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin, in a special message on Monday, had said that the government was mulling the possibility of making the use of face masks compulsory in public places. Now let's take a look at the country's latest COVID-19 situation. We may be back to a single digit, but the situation in Sarawak is being closely monitored by the Health Ministry. Malaysia reported nine new COVID-19 cases as of noon on Thursday, with six of those being local transmissions. Of the six, four cases involved Malaysians, all of which were recorded in Sarawak. The other two local transmissions involved foreigners, both involved prison detainees, one in Kelantan and another in Sabah. According to the Health Ministry, the three imported cases involved two foreigners and one Malaysian. Meanwhile, eight patients were discharged, bringing the total number of recoveries in the country to 8,574. The current recovery rate is at 97%. During the press conference today, Health Ministry Director General Dr. Noresh Abdullah was asked whether a stricter movement control order would be implemented in Sarawak due to the number of infections there. Jadi kita lihat memang ada pertambahan kluster iaitu uh, uh, 10 kluster yang telah dikenal pasti uh, di Kuching tapi tindakan kita, kita telah hantar pasukan di Kementerian Kesihatan uh, untuk bersama melihat kepada uh, tindakan kita di lampangan dan kita akan memantapkan dan pertingkatkan uh, kesan iaitu uh, tracing, contact tracing untuk mengesan kes-kes yang positif dan kalau perlu kita akan melaksanakan iaitu uh, EMCO ataupun PKPD uh, di kawasan tersebut. Setakat ni kita masih mengawal dengan baik dan uh, tidak ada masalah untuk kita melaksanakan. Tetapi kalau perlu kita akan menjalankan PKPD di kawasan tersebut. Warisan Sabah government is not about to collapse, a senior party leader told us today. The Warisan-led Sabah state government was hit by another political coup attempt with more than a dozen assembly persons allegedly induced to quit their parties. In an interview with Malaysia Kini, Warisan chairperson Liu Viu Kiong said this was the second wave and like the first wave, the move did not shake the state government. The former de facto law minister added that rumours that the Warisan government is going to collapse were baseless. So, uh, the rest of uh, Warisan still intact? As I said, we have 43 out of uh, 60. Okay. We are very, very intact and uh, very stable. And not forgetting, in Sabah, we also have five dominated uh, assembly men and women. So they are also part of the government. So uh, uh, so these rumors about Warisan is going to collapse and all that is absolutely untrue, absolutely nonsensical. He also urged the police to investigate the agent's provocateur and unseen master behind the alleged scheme, though he declined to name the political mastermind. Earlier, Warisan Sapanga MP Aziz Jaman told the Dewan Rakyat his colleagues were receiving text messages from individuals claiming to be agents of Number One. 
Separately, Gumgum Assembly person Arun Narsen Taib said he had been contacted 10 times since last month to get him to back former Amno Sabah chief Musa Aman as chief minister. Coming up next, the US has ordered the closure of a Chinese consulate in Texas. China has threatened retaliation. US President Donald Trump said it was always possible he would order the closure of more Chinese consulates in the US. The United States has ordered China to close its consulate in Houston, Texas, and Beijing is threatening retaliation. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson called the request a political provocation. China strongly condemns such an outrageous and unjustified move which will sabotage China-US relations. We urge the U.S. to immediately withdraw its erroneous decision, otherwise China will make a legitimate and necessary response. A source with direct knowledge of the matter said China was considering closing the U.S. consulate in Wuhan in response, while the U.S. State Department reduced staff and their families early this year amid the coronavirus outbreak that first emerged in that city. U.S.-based China experts said Beijing could also opt to target more important consulates in Hong Kong, Shanghai or Guangzhou, something that could hurt American businesses. A State Department spokeswoman said China was asked to close the Houston consulate, quote, in order to protect American intellectual property and Americans' private information, but did not give specifics. After the U.S. requested China to pull out of Houston, local media reported late on Tuesday the documents had been burned in a courtyard at the consulate building. China's foreign ministry said the consulate was operating normally. The U.S. government is prepared to pay nearly two billion U.S. dollars for a vaccine that's not even ready yet. The U.S. government will pay 1.95 billion U.S. dollars to buy 100 million doses of Pfizer and German biotech firm BioNTech's COVID-19 vaccine candidate if they are able to successfully develop one, the company said on Wednesday. Pfizer and its German partner BioNTech secured a nearly two billion U.S. dollar order from the U.S. government for a vaccine that doesn't exist yet. Under the agreement, the company said on Wednesday that the government will receive 100 million doses of a COVID-19 vaccine and can acquire up to 500 million additional doses. It's part of the government's Operation Warp Speed program that aims to speed up development of vaccines and treatments. Americans will get the vaccines for free. Pfizer would have to prove its vaccine candidate is safe and effective in a big phase 3 clinical trial and get emergency use authorization and approval from the US Food and Drug Administration. The company said they would expect to see some form of regulatory approval as early as October. Pfizer's and BioNTech's vaccine has shown promise in small and early stage studies in humans. On Monday, the two companies said that their latest data showed that two doses of the experimental vaccine produced virus-neutralizing antibodies in healthy volunteers. News of the deal drove shares of both companies higher in early trading Wednesday. BioNTech's shares have nearly tripled this year. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can go to kinitv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. I'll be back with more tomorrow, same time, same place. I'm Bristol Michael. Thank you for watching.